<sighs> Here we go. Hey everyone, for those who don't know me, my name is Janet, and up until last Friday, I was a story artist at Disney Animation. I've been working in the Hollywood animation industry for the past four years, and in this video, I'm gonna go into all the reasons why I've decided to leave my job at Disney. First of all, the animation industry probably isn't what you think it is, because it certainly wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Let me explain. I thought animation was going to be different than having a normal nine to five office job. It would be where creativity is all that mattered. I'd be able to work with people I looked up to all my life. And if I was lucky enough to get hired, I'd be considered the best of the best. All I had to do was work hard, prove myself as an artist, and maybe one day I'd be given the opportunity to create my own movie or TV show as a director or showrunner. But the reality is, this is all a lie. The animation is a corporate business. You're a cog in a machine. Toxic ladder climbing behavior is rewarded. And certain job titles lead to massive egos. Making money in this industry is all that matters. And being a creative artist is always going to be second to that. And at the end of the day, it is a mundane 9 to 5 office job where I sit in my cubicle all day at my computer or I have meetings about having meetings. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a corporate job. It's just I wish my school, the recruiters, the the studio itself told me what I was walking into because then maybe I'd be able to make a more informed decision about my future career. For example, you know what being a lawyer, doctor, barista, cashier at a retail job means? You know what kind of work culture you're signing up for? I instead felt lied to. Like I mentioned before, I had this dream of being a director or showrunner. The past four years have actually made me realize that these directors and showrunners don't actually have as much power as you think they do. You now answer to the executives and people much more powerful than you. Here's one example of a terrible note that I got from an executive. I was on a preschool show where we were given this note that we are no longer allowed to draw angry eyebrows. Why, you may ask? The executive said it's because we don't want to teach children being angry is okay. So let me get this straight. I'm allowed to draw sad faces, maybe mildly annoyed, but not angry because anger is bad? Aren't preschool shows supposed to be teaching children how the world works? If they don't like something, you pretty much have to change it, no matter how ridiculous the note. By the way, these people have no creative background. They're business people. Should people who have no idea how animation is even made have creative say when their job is to manage where money goes? This is how I was given this false sense of autonomy, where on one hand, sometimes I was given the ability to put my own personal stamp on whatever show I'm working on. But actually, I'm just a puppet and someone else is pulling my strings. Most of the time, I'm just juggling office politics. I end up feeling like the work I do doesn't matter and no one actually values me. I'm just another cog in the machine. I thought maybe if I climbed up the ladder a little bit more, it might get better. So I watch my directors and showrunners closely to see if one day when I'm in their shoes, if it might get any better. And it's not. And this made me question my core reason of pursuing animation in the first place. My second reason is that it's not about how good you are, it's about who you know. What they say about actors in Hollywood also applies to animation and also every single corporate job. Friends tend to hire friends, so good luck getting in if you don't know anyone. Getting hired is not a sign that you're good enough or the best of the best at all. Once you're hired, in order to keep climbing that corporate ladder, it's more beneficial for you to form alliances or cliques rather than to be good at your job. And what that translates to is unqualified people fail upwards while many talented people are passed up for a promotion and ignored. It encourages shady, snaky behavior on one side while everyone else is getting 
more and more resentful. And sometimes it can throw entire productions into chaos because of one person's incompetence and ego. Oftentimes people are only kind to you if you're of value to them. So if you're on the lower rung of the totem pole, you are treated like dirt and stepped on. This mean girl high school environment starts to develop where instead of collaboration, only certain people are worshipped. I thought I was done with petty high school drama when I graduated. Apparently not. People get to say, I work at X studio, and they end up mistaking the company's prestige as a reflection of their own accomplishments or lack of accomplishments. They mistake their job titles and other people stroking their ego for actual fame, and they use it as an excuse to act like Z-list celebrities. Yet, outside of this industry, no one would even know their names. The people pretending the hardest to be kind, upstanding people on social media were oftentimes the cruelest to me at work. Alienating me, ostracizing me, and treating me like I'm less than for no apparent reason. Imagine going to work at a place filled with people that you respect and admire, and no one will make eye contact with you. And this happens for years. Imagine what that does to your self-esteem. They wouldn't treat a stranger on the street so disrespectfully, yet they treat their own coworkers like hot garbage. Even people I once knew in school, who used to be normal, kind people, after a few promotions, they turn into completely different people. It took me four years of working in the industry to get the courage to admit to myself that this isn't what I signed up for. And you know, I felt a lot of guilt for being so resentful of my job when I know that there are so many people out there right now who would love to take my place. Recently, I've been getting multiple offers for a promotion and I self-sabotaged myself and rejected all of them. I know it sounds crazy. I would have jumped at the opportunity a few years ago, but it wasn't until I seriously had to consider these promotions, did I realize that how unhappy I was. The idea of taking these promotions actually made me sick to my stomach. I was even offered to be extended at my current job at Disney, but I couldn't bear to stay there for a second longer than I had to be. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on my education, and I even went through a lot of heartache to even be able to pursue animation as a career. But now that I'm in it, I'm risking money, I'm risking status, I'm risking, in a way, my stability, and everything that I've worked for in the past 10 years. I don't take my decision lightly. And I get that some people love working in animation. All the things that I mentioned either don't bother them or they expected all of it. It's just that animation is not for me. While everyone else was trying to become a storyboard artist or a director, I was always working on my side hustle, Honey and Absent. Starting my own business was more rewarding than anything I've ever done at work. Everything I did mattered. If I succeeded, if I failed, it's all on me. It's how I knew what true autonomy felt like, not the fake kind that animation sold to me. At a certain point, I knew I had to choose between the two because it became too hard to juggle both. I threw up and almost fainted at work because I was overworking myself. So the final reason why I decided to quit was because I knew I would regret it for the rest of my life if I didn't at least try to take the leap and pursue my business. So with some money in my savings, I quit my job at Disney. I'm starting a new journey of becoming an independent artist and I will be posting new art business and productivity videos here on YouTube every single week. I'm going to be transparent about how much money I'm making or not making, and I'm going to be documenting every single step I take to get there. So if you'd like to see me succeed, or maybe if you want to see me fail, jingle my bells down there. I know you want to. So if you'd like to support me on this crazy journey, I have merch linked down below. I am actually wearing it right now. Let's do some modeling shots. Yeah. Finally.
finally, comment down below what you thought working in animation is actually like. And if you are in animation right now, I'd love to hear your stories too, good or bad. And I will see you in the next video.